Hey everybody, Todd Cooperwriter here with Esoteric. We're here to do a little bit of coating today, hence the gloves, and I just happened to match uh, our Lamborghini here. Uh, what we wanna talk about is some of the more technical aspects uh, of it. A lot of times people overthink the coating processes, you know, what kind of tools you need, um, how do you wanna approach something. Here in particular today, we're gonna talk about more complex areas. You know, when you're doing a great big flat area, it's pretty straightforward. You're doing straight lines back and forth as you're applying it. But when you have it all broken up here, people get a little bit confused. You know, how do you do it? You can't do straight lines back and forth because you got oddball shapes to it. Um, how do you approach that? Well, it's actually pretty simple. You're, you're always working off of time. What do I mean by that? You know, if I'm going to have five minutes between application and removal on a flat surface, I want to do the same thing on areas uh, like this. And that number, I'm not just saying you always do it five minutes, but that number is dictated by the coating that you're using. So if you're using a different brand than what we're using here, check with the manufacturer so you know exactly how much time. Some products, you can only do a small little area and remove it. We don't like those products uh, here at Esoteric because you run into too many chances of missing something or high spots or all kinds of other problems. You can run into it. We prefer products that can sit on the surface a little bit uh, longer. You're more efficient about uh, the process uh, at that time. It's just generally easier to work with. Okay, so if I'm looking at, at this area of the car right here, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break it down into small sections. You know, I've got a section here, I've got a section here, a section here, here, so on and so forth. And I'm gonna approach it no different than if I was polishing this area. And the more complex the area, the smaller the areas that you want uh, to break it down to. And I just kind of compartmentalize everything. And I don't get too caught up in, you know, ha 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 how many times have I gone over this? You know, have I overlapped or anything? because it's not really that big of a deal. Once again, don't try to overthink uh, uh, the process. But your one big tip for you is the tools that you're using. You know, first of all, you're gonna have your typical applicator block uh, like this that you're gonna be using most of the time. It's great for perfectly flat surfaces and it's, you know, okay for curved surfaces too. But what about you when you get in some of these small areas? Well, I mean, you can see up here, I can access all of this with it, but what happens here? People don't really think about it too much. All you gotta do is turn it sideways, uh, or you can even work it like this right here to get full coverage. But that's not the only thing that you wanna work with. You know, we've talked about these in a lot of our videos. You know, these are our wax applicators uh, that we sell here at esotericcarcare.com. Uh, and then we go in and we cut these up, and these make great applicators for tight little areas that you can't get your block to. Um, we've talked about this and wheel coating in particular. These things are fantastic when working with wheels because you can't access everything with these. It's no different on the body. You have these areas, you got some areas back in here and these you know, really intricate tail lights. You want something that can you know, uh, work the contours so that you get coating um, everywhere. Okay, enough talk about that. I'm gonna go into the application process here a little bit. I've got everything set out. So I got my gloves, got my applicators. Um, we prefer to use simple pipette for applying. We use less product that way and we have less mess. We have our two towels. One's gonna be for our initial removal. The other is gonna be for our secondary and final removal of the product. Okay, um, and with your coating, just safety tips on that. Make sure when you open the bottle, you've cleaned everything off. Make sure that you don't have anything hanging out here on the rim of it uh, where it's crystallized. You know, all it takes is one little piece to get in your applicator block here and you can scratch it up. So we clean that off before and I clean it off after I'm done too before it gets stored back just so that we don't have any problems. So I'm gonna go in here and just start everything out. And I'm gonna go up to my first uh, area, uh, my furthest away. So I'm gonna be back in here and I'm doing straight line motions. And the question may be, well, what if, what if I miss a tiny little area? Well, you know, if you miss a tiny little area that you just can't get anything to, 
that's not a big deal. Once again, we're trying not to overthink this whole process here. But I just have a little bit of an overlap just to make sure that I've got full coverage. And then I'm gonna uh, tilt it up on its side so I can get this little area and run it down through here. And you know what you wanna do too when you have this, you wanna have a light with you so you can take a look to make sure that you get uh, everything in there. And I'm gonna look down in uh, the overhead lights to make sure that I'm getting uh, an even coverage to it. Now, a couple things, you wanna try to avoid as much as you can stopping in the middle of an area. That can leave a heavy concentration right there, which could lead to a high spot. So I wanna to try to you know, make sure that the stroke goes all the way to the end as I'm applying it. Now, in a situation like this, where I have this little area, I wanna coat that too, but I really can't get in here with this. So this would be the time when I grab my handy dandy little foam wedge here. And I can just get in and make sure everything is coated evenly. And it's gonna be a little bit of heavy concentration right there. This holds a little bit more uh, than you would think, but that's okay, it's not going to hurt uh, anything. While I have this in my hand, I might as well use this to get in here to the carbon fiber area because I can't get in there with the regular applicator. So you can see where this is going to uh, come in handy. And then I'm going to repeat that process throughout the rest. And, you know, people get a little bit caught up. Well, how much time here versus how much time here? There's going to be some variances in the amount of time that's on the surface. You know, typically speaking, I'm going to apply, I'm going to work my way down, and then I'm going to start my removal process where I started the application process. So you should be really close in time. It's not like, you know, 30 seconds one way or the other is going to make that much of a difference in how it's on uh, uh, the surface or anything else to do with it. It's not going to hurt um, uh, durability in particular. So I've got all of that stuff done. I do this section. And then I come here, I work this section. I'll go back to, I'll go back to my applicator and I will run this down through here, trying to keep things as straight lines as I can, but also knowing I'm not gonna get perfectly straight lines depending on um, how the surface is shaped, and that's fine. That's not gonna make any difference in the grand scheme of things. So I'll work this section by itself. Notice I'm not necessarily going over into different, uh, different sections. So once I'm sure I've got everything, and I look down in here, and I, yep, everything is all the way to the edge. And I'm gonna continue to repeat that process uh, throughout, just making sure that I've got complete coverage of it. Now, when it's time to remove, I said I've got my two towels here. Uh, we use brand new towels. This is just part of cost of doing business here. These towels are going to be pitched when we're done. They start to get hard. You know, we've had videos about this before. Oh, well, you can just put them in a bucket of water and you don't have to worry about it. Is it really worth risking potentially scratching something up with a towel that you use for coating? I don't even bother with it. Throw them away. Okay, now that I've got these done, I'm going to go in here, my removal process. And it's going to be small circular motions because that kind of breaks everything up. You know, people also ask, especially if they're not familiar with it, well, why are you removing it when you just put it on? What, what's the point of putting the coating on? Well, you're not removing the coating per se. Uh, the coating has bonded to the surface and you're removing what's left over. And if you don't remove it all, you get high spots, you get streaks. That's the, the stuff that people worry about if they're going to do it at home. Uh, because if you don't get it all removed and you don't catch it for a couple of days, it's going to be a dark spot. It's going to be very difficult to remove and it's probably going to require machine polishing. Okay, when I'm doing this, as I've talked about in other videos, I'm removing from here but I also want to make sure that I go out a little bit further on these adjacent panels because chances are I have pushed some of my coating into that other area. 
It's another where, uh, area where high spots come from. Okay, so this should have gotten most of the coating off of the surface. This is when I come back with my secondary towel. And like I said, I overlap that area quite a bit. And I make sure that I'm not leaving anything behind. Still small circular motions. I get all the way back in there. And I, I make sure here uh, at that low point, I make sure that I get all of it. I don't want to leave any hot, high spots down in there. And continue through this whole panel. Once again, overlapping into the next sections just to make sure I don't leave any high spots behind. It's really as simple as that. Uh, and then I'll follow up with my flashlight and I'll look around and I'll make sure that I didn't miss anything. And like I said, what you're looking for is dark spots. And, and you're not just looking on the areas you applied it to, you're looking on the areas adjacent to that panel as well. Well, hopefully that gives you a better understanding of what goes into coating, particularly when you're working with more complex shapes like we have on our rare Lamborghini here. Um, it's not as straightforward as a big flat panel, but really there's not a whole lot of differences to it. You just have more areas for coating to hide and potentially cause high spots. All right, you wanna learn more about some coating topics that we've done. Got a couple of videos here for you to check out. As always, we appreciate you hanging out with us here on the Esoteric channel. We look forward to seeing you in our next video.